Uh, it's always always feels nice to contribute a little bit on the board. Um, I haven't found a back, back of the net for a couple of games, so I mean, I think I've been creating and things like that. But it's it's always a nice to see him going. What do you guys think of the team's defensive performance? Yeah, I um, I think it's a process right now. Better tonight, obviously, than a couple of those games on that road trip, but. Uh, it's definitely a work in progress. I think we're a little frustrated with some things going on in our game. Um, a little bit of cheat in the D zone, uh, a little bit of swinging and stuff that we gotta we gotta clean up. And you know, you see when we do it right, the offensive chances it gives us. You know, Helmer's goal was off a D zone uh, breakdown there, or D zone the structure that we did well and and got a break off of it. So um, when we do it right, it, it's easy to see. I think we'll be dangerous. I mean, the, the crazy thing is we haven't played our best hockey yet. Um, I think through and through our room, we, we understand that and we see that and we see progress and it's not going to change in one day. It's not going to change in one game. Um, it's just a work in progress that we're working through and the coaches are working through and uh, we got good talk and good communication that we're working through. Obviously, you guys are wanting to tighten up on the defensive side, but three straight games with seven goals. What's clicking for you guys offensively right now? No, I think we're just hung around net. We put in pucks there. We've been talking about a lot that we want to shoot, we want to crash the net, we want to get bodies there. Um, I think we've been doing that um, pretty good lately, and I think that shows up too. Um, I think we just have to continue to do that, and like it takes us to clean it up a little bit on the back end, and we will be real dangerous. Mark, can I talk to you about, like, I think it's the first half defenseman since 1988 when they connected, you guys four more games in a row. That's Martin on the board. <laughs> yeah, just tell EJ more. about that one. He'll have a field day with that. <laughs> but what, just in general, what do you think working for you specifically? I think it's just the way our team's playing, the way we're transitioning the puck. Uh, we're we're moving the puck north a lot quicker than we were earlier in the year, and it's allowing us as as D to jump and uh, get past the forwards that are defending us and kind of creating space. And you know, some of it's luck too that's involved. And um, you know, it, it's fun to put up points, but it's fun to win. That's that's the most important thing. So uh, we're doing a good job of that right now. It looked like on the first goal they they kind of shaded towards Kale when he got the puck and he sent you. Just how much do you, does it help both of you to like play off each other and kind of defense is have to be worried about both of you? Yeah, we we got pretty good rapport up there. We understand how each other likes to play, and uh, you know we get the we get the puck to each other in good spots. I think it's more so about just getting the puck to each other in good spots and uh, not trying to force it anywhere. And uh, you know he skates so well; he's such a dynamic player, and uh, you know they they key in on him a lot more. And you know that can open me up at sometimes and opens our forwards up and opens shooting lanes up for both of us at times. So uh, it's it's been fun playing with him. Obviously, great. Um, we always want to see guys scoring goals, of course, but um, doing doing it against your the old team in the first game against them is obviously huge and uh, really happy for him. Last question. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask you, Devon. I, I know that the Olympic conversation is kind of starting. What would it mean to you to maybe get the nod with Team Canada the way you're playing? Yeah, obviously, it would be a you know a big honor for me. Um, I don't know if, if I'm in that conversation, I'm in the conversation. Um, if I'm not, I'm not. It's it's not up to me. It's, uh, you know, I'm just going out there and trying to play my best hockey for the Avalanche right now. And, you know, if, if that opportunity comes, I'd be grateful for it. Should he be in the conversation first? What's that, sorry? Should, should he be in the Olympic Oh, for sure, 100%. <laughs> no doubt. I'd play against you all day. I'll roast you. <laughs> <laughs> Lower body injury. I don't have a timeline on him yet. We'll find out more tomorrow at some point. There are seven goals in the expectation period. No. <laughs> <laughs> on, a more, on a more serious note, how, how long do you think you guys can keep this up? Like, you know, even before that, you had five before that. Like, what's working? Well, guys are moving well and shooting well. We've been getting to the net quite a bit. I think the puck decisions in the offensive zone have been much better. There's um, a lot of activity. It's tough to cover. And to me, that starts with our back end, the movement on our back end. Guys like Kale, Taser, G, EJ is really involved in that too. Um, 
that with the with the movement and puck protection and the skating of our forwards, I think has been it's been tough to handle. A lot of those goals are coming out of ozone play and not so much just on the rush. So it's an area that we've improved over the last few years, and it's it's been really good here as of late. Eleven two and one in your last fourteen, and Sean Cave said that fielding you guys haven't even played close to your best hockey yet. Um, what do you think you could see out of this team if you guys really start cleaning up those issues on the back end? Yeah, I don't know. We'll find out. Hopefully, I mean, I'm, I'm, we're paying a lot of attention to the defending side of it because, you know, without ignoring what we're doing offensively, because it's a key to our success. But um, there's things that we definitely can get better out at on a nightly basis, and we seem to fix one problem and another one pops up. Um, there were periods tonight where I thought we were really good on the defending side of it, and then um, other stretches where we're just giving up too much. You know, it's kind of a funny night because I think if you look at it, Kemp's probably lets in two bad goals. I think you'd, you'd want that power play goal back, the slap shot, the, the backhand goal on the side of the net, but then he comes up with all these huge saves in traffic and uh, rebound opportunities and putbacks that we didn't do a very good job of right in front of the crease tonight. Um, but he came up with some big saves in there. So, I mean, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way he played. Um, and so he's a little bit like our team, you know, he's got to clean up, you know, make sure that they're not getting any easy ones and then make some of the saves that that that, uh, that he made tonight, ones that, you know, are robbing teams of goals. And that's what I think his potential is. And I also think it's potential of our group to be able to do that, to make it tougher for guys to get those secondary opportunities, make sure we're not giving up any easy ones. like. Um, we do so many good things in the offensive zone and Berkey turned one over and we had a deactivating and, and I don't think it was a great time for him to activate. I think it was Jacob McDonald and then they get a two on one out of it late in the period. Um, so we'll, we'll study some of those things, you know, but it's, it's a fine line to walk. So we want to be our guy, I want our guys to be active and, and, um, and, and cause that confusion and chaos in the offensive zone. And every once in a while, you turn a puck over. If you're not firm enough on it, it ends up in the back of your net. So tonight, we came out on the winning end of it because we're so dangerous when we were, when we had that movement. But we want to make sure that we're almost perfect and precise with that. Um, and we're not turning those pucks over to give them easy goals. You talked about both about those frustrations in your own end and also that fine line to walk even now. You wrestle with how much you can accept as the trade-off for being so close to nothing. Yeah, I think we have to. I mean, because that's it's a little bit of the, about the way we're built, and and we we expect our our defense to be an active part of our offense, both off the rush and in the offensive zone. And sometimes you're going to give up a chance or two, you know. And um, we want our team shooting the puck and not hanging on to it too long. And especially when we get traffic or we find lanes with that movement and you're going to shoot some pucks and you know you're going to get some blocked it's a, it's okay to get them blocked you know i think you you shoot shoot and sometimes you shoot just because you got traffic and you can get it back and you know they don't know where it's going either and you're looking downhill and they're trying to cover guys and still try and find the puck so you know, there's a lot of things that we talk about when it comes to our offense, but I think there is a trade-off there for certain. Um, but we just have to get gradually better at it as the year goes on. We still haven't hit a point where I'm really satisfied with it just yet. So on Caves as offensive production, is that tail rubbing off on him, or is this a guy that's just more gifted than maybe you think he can get a spot? I think it's a guy that's more gifted than, than what, what you thought. I think... Uh, He's such a highly intelligent player. His skill set is is elite. He's an elite skater. His head's up all the time. He thinks the game. He's moving pieces around on the ice with some deception. He's got a great shot, um, great passer. He, I, I think he's a real smart, not just offensive player. I think he's a real smart 200-foot player. And, um you know, you see he's, he's hitting a little bit of a stride. What is that, four straight games with multi-points, multi-point games, which ties the franchise franchise record. Uh, a lot of bit, a lot of good offensive D that have come through here, and he just finds a way to keep chipping in. It helps, though. It helps playing with Kale um, because teams got to pay attention to him, and, and he's out on the ice a lot with, like, Mac, Nico, Landy, and guys like that. Um, so there's a lot of weapons hitting the ice at the same time, and they can all hurt you in a little bit of different ways. So when you when you're putting a five-man unit like that on the ice, it's 
you know, he, he if he doesn't see something, then he's getting dangerous on his own. So that, and that's what we want from all those guys. So, so I mean, it's just intelligent hockey. A more traditional defensive pair, you know, usually you'll have one guy who's more stay at home and one guy who's more offensive. When you're dealing with two guys like that and with the bottom tail, how do you coach them and how much do you have to rely on them to kind of communicate with each other and do something when players are skating back, considering they're both, like you said, they're both two-way players? It's it's no different than any the reads that any of our D have to make. To be honest with you, we, you know we can coach them as a group because if one guy's up ice, the other guy's got to stay home. And if you're activating and you don't get the puck, you got to make sure you're coming out. And then there's a lot of responsibility from our forwards in there too. Like we end up playing three high a lot in the offensive zone, if, if not more. And you know there's responsibilities. If you want your D to be active in the offensive zone and be part of the offense, and if a forward covers for him, he's got to make sure that he's doing that job till he gets back. You know, and we've had some troubles with that. And our forward, you know, forwards want to play offense, but I mean, if you're going to be a five-man unit, you know, and be interchangeable, they they have a responsibility to defend there as well. So you know, there's there's a lot of communication when it comes to that when we're talking about our ozone play, especially. You mentioned Berkey's turnover, but what do you think of his game tonight and just in general, how he's been playing tonight? It's been good. I mean, I feel like he's really been skating and really been shooting the puck well. Um, draws a penalty tonight, gets two goals. Um, you know, even on the turnover, he gets it. He drives it off the wall, makes a great play. He gets the interior of the ice, and I think he lost the handle on it a little bit. Like I said, it's not that's not all on him. That's also on the defenseman that kind of activated at the wrong time when he makes a seam cut. There was no need for him to go there. Berkey was driving into a scoring area. What does it mean to be a really dangerous team? It means that you got, you know, whichever unit you're putting out on the ice for five guys, you have the ability to either possess the puck in the offensive zone and create scoring chances and, and be dangerous. And, and we try to make sure we got that goal in the whole game, you know, um, start to finish. When teams, teams take penalties on you, you want to have a dangerous power play. You're trying to just fill every gap in there when you're – when you're putting your guys out on the ice, whether you're starting in the D, D zone, that you can get dangerous on a rush attack, whether it's a neutral ice regroup, you can get dangerous. Um, when they're trying to break out, if you're getting back above pucks and checking pucks back, you get a secondary opportunities. It's just trying to pick up every aspect of the game where we're not just thinking about getting the puck back, we're thinking about what comes next. We're trying to get one step ahead of it. How close are you? Well, we've been pretty good here recently, you know. Now it's just finding that balance and making sure we're not giving up too much while we're doing it. Of Ingram and Bell, two more points tonight. Uh, really picked up, you know, his production has picked up quite a bit. Just what you guys thought you could get out of him within your system when you played him? Yeah, and I think he's got more room here yet. You know, I love this. I I, I, I thought the last game he played was, was the best game I've seen him play. Uh, in New York, skating better, more tenacious on the four check, just uh, like those things that we've been talking to our guys and watch our guys, our young players grow over the last, you know, three years and, and how they've improved in those areas. Well, he's new to it here, right? And, and so to me, his game's been a little bit slow, a little bit methodical, and it's starting to pick up. He has the hands and skill and, and vision to make plays. And when he's skating, he can be real dangerous. He's a solid player on the puck. Um, he has a tendency, in my opinion, to get a little cute. Um, so finding that balance of, of being a power forward and then making the plays when they're there. And tonight, early in the game, first half, I'd say, he was outstanding. And um, his game deteriorated a little bit as the game went on. He had some turnovers and, and getting a little cute with it. But, I mean, if we can start getting that game out of him for longer stretches, and, you know, I think he's still got some room to grow. Yeah. Is penalty an issue for you at all? Uh, not not so far. I, I didn't I didn't love that call to be honest with you. It was like I didn't I didn't love Landy's either. You know they're both stick penalties. But I thought Landy got around and got under the stick twice. We got called for a hook. I didn't see him get on the hands at all. And Kubels he gives him a whack, but it's just on the pants or shin pads. I don't think he got his hands or stick at all on that. You know I think some of those are just the score and and the time we're spending and. And um, they were calls that maybe they could, didn't get real clear angles on, and sometimes you got to live with a few of those. I thought he was okay. He looked a little sluggish to me. Did some good things. 
He's got he's got a ways to go too. He's been out for a while. Um, like I mentioned with Matt coming back into the lineup, it's you can do all the skating you want. We haven't had a lot of five on five practice time, so no one's really been leaning on him and making him work through traffic. Um, so I think his pa his pace has got to get back up to speed. But, you know, get, got to get um, quicker here as, as we get going and getting in some games, and it will. Well, it's good to see Nate score. I know he likes to score every night, and and it can start wearing on him if it doesn't. He's been steadily just chipping away. He's picked up a lot of assists, but to score now in back-to-back -back games, I think that's important for his confidence and also for him to you know sort of ramp up his shooting and. Um, not unlike Berkey, you know, when they see pucks go in the net and they're shooting it a little bit more, they continue to shoot it more, which is what we need from these guys. Great, thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah.